Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From the Laboratory to the Classroom, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now this week's article I've selected is The Myths of the Digital Native and the Multitasker by Kirshner and Bruckery. Now this paper is really interesting, I, I like it. It's not original research, it's just a summation of research, so we can kind of call this a review paper. And it's broken into two parts. The first looks at digital natives and whether or not they're real, whether or not research says digital natives actually exist. So the argument was this. Since 1984, personal computers have been prevalent, therefore any kid born after 1984 doesn't know a world without computers, ergo they're better at computers than everyone else. They think differently, they act differently, they can handle com computers whereas us oldies out there can't. Turns out though, all the research says digital natives do not exist. Young kids, digital native generation kids, are no better at, no more skilled at, no more knowledgeable about computers than anyone else in the world. It turns out they're using the same basic suite of MS Word, MS Doc, Excel that everyone else is. They use the same Photoshop we do. They use the same few uh, social networking sites, Facebook, so on and so forth. They're doing almost exactly what we as adults are doing. And when they drill down and look at skills like coding and, and thinking deeply and hypertexting, they're no better at it than anyone else is. So it turns out there is no digital native. And they even push it forward. They said, okay, what if it's 1994 or anyone born after 2004? And they keep finding nothing. So this idea of a digital native is a wonderful myth that kids understand computers and that as adults, we're never gonna get them, but it ain't true. Which I think leads to three really important things we can kind of use as teachers. One, this means the skills that we can expect our students to have when they come into the room, kind of their, their baseline, it's gonna be the same as every other skill we've ever had. There is no difference between the next generation of kids and the generation 50 years ago, which means for our teaching and learning purposes, cool, we're at the same spot we've always been. We're just starting at the same baseline. Two, this gives us power as teachers to know that cool, I might not know anything about computers, but I can learn it and get just as good as these kids over here. So I'm not out of the ball game. All I gotta do is put in my time and effort, go through the learning trajectory, and I can pick it up just like everyone else. And three, teaching digital literacy is gonna be quite important. If kids are coming in with the same basic knowledge we have with computers, then we need to teach them how to use computers well. We can't just assume that they know it. There is no native there. So digital literacy classes, still a good idea. Now the second part of this paper then switches into this concept of multitasking and it says, okay, if there were digital natives, one of the skills they would have would be this ability to jump between tasks because the computer requires them to do that. Ergo, multitasking is now a skill. And this paper then goes through a bunch of the research that shows hardware, there is no way a brain can process multiple streams of information focused at any one time. Software, psychologically, all the research shows that once we multitask, we go slower, our performance drops markedly, and educationally, anytime kids multitask while trying to learn for school, learning, performance, homework, all those skills go down the drain. So this idea of multitaskers, again, ain't true. Which now bring it back to us as teachers. This gives us, again, I think three incredible points. Point one, where are we asking kids to multitask without thinking about it in our own practices in our own classroom and how can we start to kind of tease that apart so we're not asking too much or asking too disparate of things from students at any one time. Two, we can teach this rule to students directly, let them know that this is a possibility, that it's a negative and help them start to track their own multitasking abilities. And three, digital learning, now that we're throwing a bunch of things online, Computers by their very nature beg you to multitask. Have a bunch of tabs open, text over here, go look up, up this program. That's how computers work. They run parallel processing streams. Computers are multitaskers. And when you use a computer, you try to mimic the computer. So anytime we're gonna be doing digital learning, we have to make it very clear to the student. Research shows that within six minutes on average, that's when kids start multitasking when trying to learn on a computer. Let them know this is gonna be an issue. And then as designers, are there ways we can block that out? I don't know what that means. If that means um, blocking out programs on a computer so you can only look at one thing at a time. Um, instead of doing a big digital suite for learning, have just page by page by page, which focuses attention. So I'm not 100% sure what that means, but that's where we get to start doing our translation. If we take the ideas out, then we can say, what does that mean for us? Redefine it, test it in our own context. So there we go. There are no digital natives, which frees us up to be just as good or bad as computers as them and teach and learn it with them. And there are no multitaskers, which means us and them, we both have to be very cognizant of when we might be doing it and how to avoid doing it.